You may be seated. Uh, after, after hearing it three days in a row, I almost have the, uh, the Bible one down. The Christian flag, though? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I just say this one as loud as I can because I know it. So, uh, first, first off, um, some of you guys weren't here because uh, you were out on track. I just want to say my name is Josh. Nice to meet you all. Uh, I did want to say uh, real quick, man, uh, just what an honor uh, it is to have gotten the opportunity to be here. Um, I've been I've been in Lubbock since February 1st, um, so not very long, just a couple of months. But to me, um, not a whole lot of people get to say that they are doing their dream job. Not a lot of people get to say that. Um, and maybe not a lot of people would say that it's their dream job to be a high school pastor. Um, but that is my dream job. And, uh, and it's, it's awesome to not only get to do the job that I've always wanted to do, but to get to do that job at Trinity. Uh, how many of you got, did anybody get to go to the uh, Salute American Hero event the other night? Um, I got the opportunity to go over there, and uh, it was awesome, man. Uh, Taya Kyle uh, shared a really, really incredible testimony. And, uh, you know, just watching people give all that money. And, and uh, it was incredible, man, to see how many people are, are showing up and supporting uh, what, what's going on right here. Man, there's a lot of people out there for you. And uh, I think that that's a really cool thing. And so it's, a, it's an honor to be here. Um, without further ado, I got a couple gift cards. Um, Chick-fil-A and Starbucks again because it's my two favorite places. But does anybody remember what we talked about yesterday? He's got the Cultivate thing up over here, which I need to talk about that. What's up, man? What, what did we talk about yesterday? Uh, you used a Hebrew word like something like that. And it means uh, come follow me. You said that like the Jewish children would go to the rabbi, he'd say that, and then you can uh, use that for like, that's what Jesus said. There was some chacha in there. Yeah. Do you want Chick fil A or Starbucks? <laughs> come on, man. All right, I got a Starbucks card. Let me see. Uh, not you, huh? You don't want it? No? What did we talk about? Um, you talked about the guy being lowered down from the roof, and All right. that wasn't yesterday. No, nah, that was the, that was on Monday. Oh. That was on Monday, right? Monday, I talked about that desperation, right? <laughs> She's like, I'm about to get my Starbucks. What did we talk about yesterday? Well, we basically talked about um, about how uh, like young. Uh, young men would actually like ha- um, work their way up to being a rabbi, but um, they would at one point, like the rabbis, if they thought that they weren't ready or they weren't up to the task, then they would just tell them to go home. Awesome. Here you go. Thank you. Yes, yesterday we talked about la kecharai. We talked about rabbis and what it took to get to be that. Speaking of what it takes to get to be great, excuse me while I reach down here by your legs. Um, some of you guys got this Cultivate card on your chair whenever you came in. Uh, just want to give you just a, a little, a little uh, snap for what this is. So Cultivate is going to be a summer-long internship um, with us over at Trinity Church. Starts on June 1st, and it goes through August 6th. Listen, all you Chick-fil-A lovers, okay? If you go to the internship, then every single Tuesday, Chick-fil-A is provided for you. Everybody say, yeah. Man, you did, you did it just like me. You say, yeah. Say, yeah. yeah. All right, that was close. That was close. So if you want to be a part of that, man, it would be uh, incredible. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go on on Tuesdays and Wednesdays or Tuesdays and Thursdays, depending on what you want to intern for. Because you can intern for the kids' ministry, for junior high, uh, for senior high, and that's all for you guys. You can't intern for college. But it's going to be incredible. It costs 100 bucks. Uh, like I said, 10 weeks. It's going to be incredible. You want to change your life then do cultivate. Um, This morning, we're going to get into the final uh, part of what I have been talking about, desperation, Um, what has been hindering me from my my desperate pursuit, my relationship with God. And the third thing is just kind of natural. It's something that everyone kind of goes through, and it's trials. It's tribulation, right? Um, So I was doing a little bit of study, and uh, since I have some extra time, I'm going to go ahead and talk about some extra stuff, if that's all right. Um, And James, here's the greatest gift I can give to you, okay? Because you're probably not going to remember a whole lot of what I said unless you want a gift card. But the greatest thing that I can give to you is an app called Blue Letter Bible. If anybody has a smartphone, 
you're probably not supposed to have in school, so don't pull it out. Um, but Blue Letter Bible is an app that I use that I love, okay? I, I don't like to read, like, big sections of the Bible at a time. I read little sections of the Bible, and I study it. Blue Letter Bible, um, you can click on any verse, and it's going to give you the option to do a word study. That's how I found that, lechecharai word, right? It was really cool. And I got a new one for you today that you're going to have fun pronouncing. But I found all these cool words in there, and uh, there's commentary so you can read the context and everything inside of it. And I love it. And I was, I was studying in James because you guys know the most famous, like, trial and tribulation scripture is James 1-2, right? But before uh, James 1-2 was James 1-1, and I was reading, and I thought it was really, really interesting. Um, James is the brother of Jesus, right? And I think it's funny, at the, end, at the beginning of his, of his book, he says, I'm James, a bondservant of Christ. See, if it was me, I would have been like, my name is James, brother of Jesus Christ, Right, I would I would emphasize that, but I think it's cool that James he didn't even he didn't even talk about how he was his brother. He was like, I'm a bond servant. Like Jesus is is my Christ. He's my Lord. And so I thought that was really cool. And and uh, there was there was a uh, people who wrote about James and the kind of man that he was, and they said that he was such a man of prayer that he had uh, calluses on his knees that made his knees look like camel knees, like. It was crazy because that's how often, like, that's how much time he spent on his knees before the Lord. And I think that's an incredible testimony about if you spend time close to Jesus, what that does to your personal life. Because James grew up with Jesus, and he became a man of prayer. And, uh, and, he, and even, even to the point where, you know, siblings rival. Like, you know, I always wanted to beat up my sister. I know she's a girl, and that's wrong, but I did. She always told on me whenever I was eating cookies before dinner. And so I would get spanked and stuff. So I just wanted to smack my sister. And I could imagine that James would sometimes get frustrated. Maybe he didn't because Jesus was perfect. I don't know. But anyway, so, so James 1, 2, let's get into it. It says, uh, it says, count it all joy when you encounter trials of many kinds, knowing that the testing of your faith will produce patience. And, you know, uh, some translations say endurance. And whenever I looked up that word endurance, um, it is a uh, hupomone. Um, on that Blue Letter Bible app, uh, you can click uh, something that tells you how to pronounce the word. And it was funny because I think it was a dude uh, from Texas uh, that, was, that was teaching me how to pronounce the word. Because he's like, in Strong's Dictionary, G3723, Hupamone. And I was like, all right, all right, all right. I don't know that he speaks Greek, but maybe, maybe he's right. So Hupamone is the word uh, for patience right there, um, and its, its root word is endurance. And, and whenever it talks about endurance, it's not talking about the endurance that helps you wait patiently while you're inside of a doctor's office, but it's an active endurance. It's something uh, along the lines that would help you run a marathon. And so whenever I read that, I had always thought, man, James was saying, hey, have a joyful time whenever you're going through trials and tribulations, right? But he's not saying that. He's not saying feel it joy or it's going to be awesome. He's saying, man, count it as joy whenever you go through something because what it's doing inside of you is building an endurance that is going to help you along the marathon of life that's going to help you last. And so he's saying count it as joy. You know, I, I, look, at, uh, I look at the life of Paul, and Paul was in prison like a lot, you guys know, but he wrote half, like half of the New Testament, you know, uh, he wrote Romans and Galatians and Colossians, and, and, and it's said that Philippians is one of the happiest books in the Bible, but he wrote it from prison, and I was thinking about that, and, and how, how uh, he was always so positive and loving of the people, and I thought, man, what if, what if Paul was not in prison, what if, what if he was able to, to go and travel to, to the church of, of Colossia and, and was able to talk with them there personally? Man, we wouldn't have the accounts that he wrote. We wouldn't have half of the New Testament. What a, what a blessing it is to us all these years later, thousands of years later, that he was in prison. Isn't that crazy that, that what, what the devil may have meant for bad, God used for incredible good? That our lives are changed because we're able to read the, 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 the letters and the teachings that Paul has for these different churches that he didn't get to visit and he had to write it. And now we have an account of it. I think that's incredible. Count it all as joy, man. It, it's doing something great. Sometimes the trials that we go through aren't for us. Sometimes they're for someone else. Your testimony changes lives. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about my testimony um, 
When I was uh, three years old, um, I had a brother and a mom in my life. You know, uh, I was born with a brother, a uh, half-brother. But at three years old, my mom left. Um, she didn't just leave uh, our, our, our house, but she left the state. You know, I'm from Florida, like I said before. And my mom took my brother, and she left, and she moved to Texas. I've always hated Texas. And so now I live here. I love it now. But, but uh, my mom had left, and she came to Texas with my brother. And, uh, and I didn't get to see them again. Like, I didn't see my brother again until I was 22, 22 years old. So all those years went by. Well, I had went to, uh, to a place called Master's Commission uh, when I got saved. I moved to Phoenix, Arizona, and I went to a school there and uh, gave my life to the Lord. And when I was there, uh, I, I just felt the strong urgency, like I need to reach out to my brother. I need to find him. Uh, we, you know, I was only three years old when he left, but I remember the bonding moments that we had because I remember him sitting on the bed next to me getting spanked first, and then I was next. Even at three years old. Isn't it crazy you remember that stuff? But, uh, but we had those bonds, and, and I thought, for whatever reason, man, God put him on my heart. I really need to find my brother. Well, his name was Oscar Jones, and at that time, because I'm old, we didn't have Facebook. So I didn't know how to get a hold of him except for this little tool that we used to use called 411. And so I called information um, in a bunch of different cities in Texas that I thought maybe he might live in. And uh, I eventually found an Oscar Jones in the state of Texas. And I called that number, and an old man answered. And I said, yeah, I'm looking for Oscar Jones. And he said, this is him? And I was like, okay, this is obviously not my brother. I was like, I'm sorry, I got the wrong number. Well, he started asking me questions. He's like, well, who is this? I was like, well, my name is Josh, and, and uh, I'm looking for my brother. His name is Oscar Jones as well. And he said, are you, uh, are you from Florida? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I am. And he said, well, I'm, I'm Oscar's grandfather. He was named after me. So we got the same name, and uh, I have his phone number if, uh, if you want to reach him. And I, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, what a miracle. So, so, yeah, give me his number. So I reached out to my brother. And uh, at the time, like I said, I was living in Phoenix, and I told him, uh, you know, everything that God was doing in my life. And uh, we had incredible conversations and caught up on life and what was going on. And I, I asked him, I was like, what are, you, what are you doing, man? Like, what are you doing with your life? And he said, I'm just working. I'm not doing anything. I said, well, why don't you, why don't you come with me? Uh, I'm, I'm driving through Texas on my way back to Florida. I'd love to pick you up, man. Just c- come live with me. Come live with me and the family, and I, I just want to reconnect. And so he thought that was a great idea, and, and uh, man, it all just worked out. So I got to pick up my brother and, uh, in Texas, and I brought him back to Florida, and we spent the summer there. And uh, it wasn't long before I realized that my brother had a serious problem with drugs. Um, he was addicted to, to cocaine. He was addicted to, to all kinds of pills. Um, and uh, I remember finding that out, and, and we had to, you know, my dad wouldn't let him live in our house while he was doing drugs but my dad paid for him to, to live in one of those hotels you can stay in for weeks at a time. And um, I remember going to church with my brother and spending time with him that summer. And, and, uh, and he was working at Red Lobster. And uh, I would go by there and get those free cheese biscuits. Anybody? I love those cheese biscuits. I'm always talking about food. But uh, he was working at Red Lobster. And, uh, and I remember his boss caught him, caught him doing cocaine, found out that he was doing drugs. And, and uh, isn't it interesting how God works? His boss says, listen, if you'll agree to do a Bible study with me every week, then I'll let you keep your job. And so my brother said, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And so slowly but surely, uh, we started going to church more often, got him hooked up in some different programs and, and tried to help him get off of drugs. Well, in, uh, in November of 2007, uh, three years after I got the opportunity to be in my brother's life, um, he overdosed on drugs and he passed away. And, uh, and I remember... Um, He didn't pass away right away. He overdosed on the drugs, and he went into the hospital. And uh, I remember being out on the beach uh, just because I I went there for peace. You know, in the middle of the night, I went out there while he was in the hospital, and I was tired. Uh, And, you know, the doctor said, hey, he's brain dead. He didn't have enough oxygen to his brain for X amount of time. And I remember going out to the beach, and the wind was just blowing crazy that night. And I remember standing out there, and, and for the first time in my life, I was going through a storm that was that difficult. And I remember for the first time going through a storm that I told God, I trust you 100%. I remember telling him, you love my brother more than I ever could. And you know what's best. And I trust you. And I remember walking through that storm and and trusting and praising God. 
and my brother did, uh, he did pass away. But uh, at the funeral, man, I got to speak the funeral, and three of his friends got saved. Like, and, uh, and that was the first time I saw my mom in about 23 years. It was the first time. And I got to meet her and forgive her and tell her, you know, everything is good between us and build relationship with her again. But the point is, there's not a single person in this room who hasn't gone through struggle. There's not a person in this room who hasn't gone through trials. Here's the thing. Going through them, I, I have gone through plenty of storms where I looked back and said, man, I was a big baby through that. And I didn't trust God. And I didn't praise him when I was going through it. That was the first storm that I got to go through and say, man, I trusted God through that. And that's an incredible thing because trials in life can either crush you or they can grow you closer to God. They can build you and do something incredible inside of your life. And uh, that was a storm that I went through, and I believe that God grew me in an incredible way, and I've never been the same since. Um, has anybody ever seen um, The Price is Right? Does anybody know who Bob Barker is? A couple of y'all? Okay, so... Drew Carey does The prices Right now, but back in the day it was Bob Barker, and, uh, and he, w- he was awesome. Some of you remember him from Adam Sandler movies. Um, but Bob Barker, so uh, and back in the day on The Price is Right, and they still do it sometimes, but what would happen is they would, they would scan the audience before they announced who was coming on next. And so I remember uh, they were scanning the audience, and they were like, next contestant on The Price is Right is, and they scanned to this woman, and they said, Shaquita Jackson. And so they, they yelled her name, and this, this, this big old woman named Shaquita jumped up out of her seat, and she just started jumping up and down. Like, she was just like, hey, hey. She was doing spins right there in her seat, and, like, it was like her Baptist church was with her. And so everybody jumped up with her, and at first you didn't know who she was if, if you didn't watch the camera hit her first. But they're all just jumping up and down. They're going crazy. And so... She's probably out of breath and sweating by the time she gets to the end of her row to get out to walk up towards the, towards the booths where you go. And the whole way up, she was just, ah, ah, oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, ah. Oh. And so she finally got up to where the podium was. And at that time, you know, Bob Barker usually says hi or whatever, but he doesn't get the chance because Shaquita is, first off, I just want to thank Bishop. Bishop in the back, thank you for being here. All my friends, I just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for this opportunity. And she just was going off. And it was crazy. And, and right there, the, the, the Holy Spirit said something. What has she won yet? She hasn't won anything. She, she's just simply in between where she was and where, where she could have gone. She saw an opportunity for a blessing in her future, but really she was just in between where she was and where she was going. And God was like, can you, can you praise me like that in, in the middle? She was right in the middle. Can you give me honor and love and glory and praise in the middle of what you're going through? Because my whole life, up until that time of my brother, I had only praised God when everything was going my way. I remember one entire summer long, I prayed. I had this scripture on my, on my little desk, and it was Mark eleven twenty four, 24, and it said, If we ask anything in the name of Jesus and believe that we have received it, then it shall be ours. And I remember every morning waking up and seeing that. And at the end of the summer... I got a check for $5,000 to help me go to school that I wanted to go to. And I remember praising God then. But, man, all I did was request it in the middle. All I did was ask for it over and over. But, man, Shaquita Jackson taught me an incredible lesson. Praise God in the middle of what you're going through. Because he's worthy before your trial, during your trials. And he's worthy after, right? There was a, one more thing I wanted to share with you guys. It was really powerful. It was in uh, Joshua um, 4, 1 through 7. Um, they had been on this incredibly long journey. You guys know how long it was for them to get out of Egypt, to cross through the desert, and get to a place where they were, they were finally 
about to cross over the Jordan and into the promised land. And they've been waiting for this forever. Mm, there's that bell. They've been waiting for this forever. And so that time was finally coming, and, and Joshua led them over the Jordan River. And, and when they got over it, the first thing that they did is they said, all right, I want someone from each tribe, 12 different tribes, I want you to take a rock, a giant rock, and I want you to put it right there in the middle where the, where the river had dried up for us to pass because a miracle had happened. And so they, they each began to grab a, a stone, and I can imagine many of them grabbed those stones together and, and put it there, and they put it right there on the dry land, and they began to stack them up, and they said, may this serve as a remembrance for the gift that God gave us when he freed us and rescued us from slavery and brought us into the promised land that he promised us. And so they stacked up those 12 stones. And I heard this guy say it one time, and uh, you guys are just going to laugh at me if I say it like him, but it was such a revelation because he said, he said, you realize that there's only 12 times to praise God. There's only 12 times, just 12. January. February, I'm not going to go through all 12, but he began to go through each month, and he's like, God is to be praised, remembered, glorified, and thanked for everything that he's done in your life every month, every day of the year, man. Whether you're going through a, a crazy trial or, or circumstance, no matter what it is, man, God's not surprised by it. You're, you're, not, you're not counted as, as unworthy or unable, uh, unable, uh, unable or incapable. That's the bubba that I was looking for. But you're not counted as incapable because of what you're going through, even, even if it's your fault. How many of you guys realize sometimes it's your fault that you're going through what you went through? Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's not. But it doesn't count you as unworthy. Man, God is going, I got something great for you. There's always a different season a good season on the way. You're going to go through stuff, but you're going to come out of it as well. And remember to praise God and thank him through the middle of it. Did you guys learn anything today? No? You better say yes. All right. That was respectful. I appreciate that. All right. Let me, let me pray for you guys, and it should be about time to go. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to get to spend a couple of days with these incredible people. Lord, I, I pray that you would just be with them, God. I pray that, that what was spoken into them, God, the things that was of you, of the Holy Spirit, that that would seal inside of their hearts and their minds, God, that they would take it with them, that they would grow from it, God, that they would be better people for it, Lord. And the things that I said that, that didn't make any sense, I pray that you would just wipe that from their memory, God. Lord, we love you, we glorify you, we honor you, and we thank you for all that you are. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everybody said? Thank you guys for your time. You have an awesome week.